This is an art attack? This is an art attack? This is Art Attack! <laughs> to see you again. Hey, where do you keep your artwork? Well, how about storing it on your laptop? What do you mean you haven't got a laptop? There it is. A laptop art folder. <laughs> Want to make one? Come and have a look at this. <laughs> to make a laptop art folder, you need to cut three sides from a cardboard box and trim them so that each section is a couple of centimetres all the way around bigger than your drawing paper. See that? Then make each section the same size each side of the folds. Then cut the other fourth side of the box to the same size. Then draw around your piece of paper on the middle of this cardboard so that you get a rectangle the same size as your paper. Then take a pen and using a ruler draw a box one centimetre in from this rectangle. There it goes, like that. You just want to make this rectangle smaller. There, like that. Round it goes. And up there. About one centimetre. Like that. And then cut the inside of this frame out so that you have a cardboard frame that fits your drawing paper. Now, from bits of leftover card, just cut three strips that are about 25 centimetres long and a couple of centimetres wide. And using a glue stick, just stick one of these strips of card so that it lines up with the outside edge of the bottom of your frame. See that? And another one so that it lines up with the outside edge of the side of your frame, like that, and then the other one, again, so that it lines up with the other outside edge of your frame, like that. And you notice there's no strip on the top. Now, when these strips are firmly stuck down and into position, just put more glue on the top of each strip. I'm just going to do it quickly to show you. You can take some time. Turn the frame over and glue it into position for the screen about one centimetre above one of those folds there. See that? And you leave this to dry, and when it's dry, you should have a frame that your artwork can slot easily in and out of, like that. See that? Nice and easy there. And it's a good idea just to test it at this point. Yeah, perfect. And this will be the screen of your laptop. Now, the reason you left this one centimetre gap is so that when the frame is actually in place, the whole thing will fold up nice and flat on itself, like that. See that? And then open it out again, and next you need to cut two pieces of thin card that are half the size of these sections there, and just lay them down and run some glue along three of the edges, like that, and glue them to one side of each section. But make sure you leave one edge glue free so that you can just pick it up like that and slot bits of paper and artwork in there. It's a sort of pocket. Do the same on that one, like this. So now you've got storage pockets as well. Now the laptop parts are assembled, you can finish it off and it's a good idea to paint the whole thing grey to start with and paint the screen itself in a different colour. See that? Then you can draw on a computer design and draw on a computer keyboard on top of the folded part. Just copy a real computer keyboard. I'm just going to start you off with a few buttons. It's, a, it's just a good idea to have a look at a few different keyboards before you design yours. Like that. And there's the one that I finished. And on this one, see what I've done? Look at that. I've finished my keyboard. I've painted the touchpad silver and I've added 
a few other buttons on there and just painted them silver and don't forget the name of the computer then all you have to do is download your picture your artwork and look at this your screen displays your artwork and you can store all the other bits of artwork and paper in your storage pockets and it all folds neatly away like a real laptop brilliant try it yourself store your artwork on your laptop art folder oh what a really clever art attack a laptop art folder and all based around an old cardboard box hello yes it's me again the head now when you're making yours, remember to glue your frame one centimetre up from the fold so that it will close nice and flat. And don't worry if you didn't catch all of that, because you can check out the Art Attack website for fact sheets on this fantastic make and all the others in the show. Thank you. A big heart attack. Here we go. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
that a nice scene? A pterodactyl swooping down to feed its young. Now, do me a favor and don't go messing about in quarries, will you? As they can be very dangerous places. <clears throat> See what I mean? Take a look at all of these fancy art papers. Look at that. All very good surfaces to draw on. Lots of different colours, but all very expensive. Well, there's a great idea to create a brilliant drawing surface in any colour you like. Cut aside from a cardboard box, squeeze out some poster paint, any colour you like, and paint it onto the cardboard. Just literally slop it on like that. Cover the whole of your cardboard, and when you've done the whole of one side of your cardboard, just leave it to one side to dry. And when it's dry, it creates a fantastic textured surface that you can draw on. And you know, the great thing is, if you mix your poster paints, you can create any colour you like. I've done this mid-blue colour, and you know, this surface is perfect for wax crayons, chalks or pastels. I'm going to use charcoal and chalk here and the great thing about using a backing colour like this is that you can use dark and light colours on your drawing surface and the background colour of course is the mid shade. So here goes the dark colour. See if you can guess what I'm doing. Scratchy surface, this is brilliant. Takes the charcoal brilliantly. Any ideas yet? <laughs> this should give it away. What's this? <laughs> so that's all the dark bits in. The paper itself is the mid colours, and now I'm going to add some chalk highlights. There we go. This should really bring the picture to life. Just gently stroking it on, a bit on there like that. Try not to disturb my charcoal. Leave out the way. <laughs> Touch there. Um, big one here. Give it a bit of a smudge. <sighs> and don't forget the reflections of the highlights. Final bit of smudging. And there you have it dark shading, highlights, and mid tones provided by the painted cardboard. Try it yourself. Paint some cardboard any colour you like to create the perfect texture for a three tone picture. Oh. What a really useful tip! Painting cardboard box card to create an individual surface on which to paint. I've done a painted cardboard box picture too. Do you want to see it? <laughs> painted cardboard box card picture. Get it? <laughs> oh, talented. Now, this used to be the part of the show where I had a look at my Art Attack scrapbook. Well, now it's my scrapbooks because I've filled so many of them with the Art Attacks that you sent in. And you know what? They're all brilliant. Take a look at some of these.
Now this silhouette picture from Rex has been made by sticking black shapes onto sugar paper. The chalk highlights and round paper sun work really well. And Adam's picture has been beautifully drawn with one of my favourites, wax crayons. And a choice of colours works really well in his picture. I love Liam's lively collage. His use of felt, card, shiny papers and lolly sticks gives a real dramatic effect. And look at this, Laura's wonderful abstract painting of musical instruments has a slight moody feeling. <laughs> How about this then? Christopher's chilly landscape has been given a real icy touch with glitter. So how did you do it, Christopher? I made my wintry scene with charcoals and cold coloured chalks. I then gently smashed them for an atmospheric effect. Finally, I sprinkled on some glitter to make my picture glisten like frost. Ha ha! Great technique. And you want frost? <laughs> I'll give you frost. Jack Frost. Now first, you need a piece of paper. You can use any colour you like or white paper. Then, to make a Jack Frost, you need to start with some coloured inks or watered-down poster paint. Cold colours are best for this, like blue, white, silver, even purple. I'm going to use blue and white for this. Now take your first colour and just pour a blob onto the middle of your paper. Now your blob needs to be about coin size. I should do it. And... Then take your second colour and pour that on top of the first. And you don't need as much as this. There we go. And then take a straw and start blowing the ink out from the centre. There we go. <gasps> Look at that. Off it goes in all these spindly, icy, pointy fingers. Oh, if you get a long prong, just chase it out. Watch this. Oh and you want some wispy lines coming off there. This is great fun to do. You just don't know what's going to happen next. Here we go. Whoa. And the idea is to create a good frosty shape with lots of icy spindles and veins coming off it. Now, you could give it some long spindly arms. One more blow here. See that? Off the side. Fantastic. Now, when you've got an icy shape that you're happy with, leave it to dry nice and flat like that and then when it's dry you can turn it into a jack frost by putting a face on it now i'm going to use a silver pen for this and it's just a case of looking for bits in the paint that might look like jack frost features now he's mean and icy so let's give him pointy eyes now i think that looks like jack frost's eyes there so i'm going to put an eye there and an eye there see that on there one there, like that. Well, that's quite mean, that, isn't it? And then a pointy nose, how about down there? Like that. See, horrible pointy nose. And for a mouth, I'm going to do it down here. Now, this silver pen is really good because it's a nice icy colour, but you could use white or blue. I'll do his mouth there, give him some horrible teeth. And maybe put a couple of lines there to make him look even meaner. And you could, if you want to, Give him some spindly hands, as if they're made from icicles. I'm going to do that as a hand down there. See that? A spindly finger going off down there. And maybe one going off into the distance up there. Oh, he's pointing up there. Look at that. See that? And there he is. There's Jack Frost with a silver face. Now, it looks good like this, or if you want to, you can outline all of the silver lines with a fine black pen, like this one. You see? All the black lines just help to pick out the pointy features a bit more. And there he is, Jack Frost. And you know, the great thing about this technique is he comes out different every time. Look at this one. This was done out of blue ink. He's very spindly, isn't he? And this one was done using green and yellow paint. And this one is green ink. And he looks like he's charging at you. And how about this? I've done this one with warm colours, so he's more of a... Freddy Fireball than Jack Frost. <laughs> and don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other art attacks in the show. So go on, try it yourself. Create your own Jack Frost. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!